Hey everybody and welcome to tonight's Zoom, February 23rd, and Monday. Super excited to spend the evening, well not the whole entire evening, the next half an hour, 45 minutes with you. And um, uh, the pre-conference call here, we were all kind of talking a little bit about some Zoom things. And so just a couple, uh, I'm going to give you a couple tips and if there's anybody else on the line that has some better tips, I would be so excited to hear them. So the first is up in the top right hand corner. You can be in speaker view where there's one person showing, the person that's speaking is showing, and then four or five people will be at the top. Or you can be in gallery view, and then there's about 20 people, um, let's see, actually 24 people on the screen, and then you go to the next window and it pushes the rest of them. So that's up to you however you would like to, to um, see the person speaking. It's totally up to you. But just a tip for those, how many on the line use Zoom on a regular basis? Okay, so just a little tip so you know that um, when you are recording, if you're the person recording, however you're seeing it is what's being recorded. Okay, so c complete clarity on that. And then the other, uh, the, another question that came up is, should I stay muted all the time or, or uh, what should I do? I've always thought that if I have noise in the background of any sort, I stay muted if, if I'm not the presenter. Um, and then I keep my hand completely on the unmute button so that I can immediately unmute if needed, that I don't have to go, oh, wait, wait, let me, ooh, let me reach over to it and grab it. I just keep my finger on it. One of the other questions that was asked a minute ago is how is um, somebody on a still, still picture, S-T-I-L-L, -L, picture? Um, and that is if down in the bottom left-hand corner, um, there's the uh, microphone for if you want to mute your audio. And then there's a picture of a camera. And if you want to mute your video, um, so I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to mute my video. You see how you have my still picture there? And how you uh, upload that picture is out at the Zoom website. So it would be www.zoom.us and then you can upload a photo. So you can upload whatever photo you want. Um, if uh, you have to go out to the website to do it versus just your, your, your icon. Anybody else have any great uh, Zoom tips or any Zoom questions? Just pull yourself off mute and go ahead and ask if you have anything. This would be great for a weekly call to our clients. Oh my gosh, that is absolutely so true. So actually, who would like to come off mute and share with us um, one or two ways that you're using Zoom? Carrie, I'll hey, say Carrie, something. it's Chelsea. Oh, right. okay. Hi, Chelsea. Yeah, so we do our healthy huddle. We started our healthy huddles every Tuesday night with our, uh, our challengers from this six-week challenge is just wrapping up. But since the challenges, I should say the health games are continuing every month, we're just going to keep doing the healthy huddles every Tuesday night. Uh, we do them at 6.30 Pacific, so people on the East Coast can still get on. And um, we usually have between, I'd say, 6 and 15 people, and it's really awesome, and I record it, and I just share it in our private Facebook page for our clients so they know that it's just in that place. Perfect. So uh, what Chelsea is saying, she uses it for her, her healthy huddles for clients client support. Okay, mm -hmm. who else wants to come off mute and share a way that they, another way that they utilize Zoom? Terry? Mm -hmm. It's Jan. Hi, Jan. Um, I used it this at, this evening, actually, with uh, the team that's in Minnesota, and we, we've been doing this pretty regular uh, for the last month, and it's just a neat opportunity because they're doing a lean and green meal, and then they're coming on and bringing clients and guests to their house. And we just had an open-ended conversation and kind of did a presentation today. So it was really cool. Very, very, it really connects you with people. Absolutely. So that's where I, so one of the ways, so what she's saying is that she does it for um, connecting with her health coaches across the country. Your goal is to have health coaches and clients clear across the country. So she kind of does a meeting, per se, um, via Zoom. Okay, what is another way that you guys are utilizing Zoom? Jill. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Cynthia, whoever was talking. 
Um, so one time, we don't do this regularly, but one time we had a new coach, and when we had done our, um, our three-way call with our first client, her first client was ready to sign up right away, and so we immediately went to Zoom, and I did a share screen, and we put in her order together so everybody could kind of see how that, you know, what her website looked like and how to do it. Okay, so perfect. So that is actually one of my favorite ways to utilize Zoom is with team members. So if I'm doing a, a coaching call or a mentoring call with, with uh, one of my uh, coaches, and if I need to show them something, then I just share screen, and that just, uh, and it's, very, it's beyond simple. So you just share screen, and then you, you don't have to try to walk them through it. And the beauty to it, too, is they can share screen. So if they say, you know what, I'm confused, where's my rolling bonus, how do I figure that out, or whatever, you can just have them share screen and walk them through it. Okay, what's another way? Whoops, who just, Larry, you just shared screen. <laughs> you, Larry Zinga, you shared screen, can you cancel that? Nope, you have to go up to the top and push stop share screen. There we go. Okay, so that would be a little, another thing. Be careful that you're not sharing screen when you don't mean to. <laughs> I have that happen every so often, so that's fine. Um, okay, what is another way that you guys are utilizing Zoom? It's Jill, otherwise known as Toshiba. <laughs> I used it to help one of my um, challengers on the games learn how to do Zoom. So we set up a separate time just to help her walk through how to, how to set up the Zoom and practice doing it before the huddle for the team on Monday. So teaching her a new skill. That is, utilizing Zoom to teach a new skill is so smart. It is, uh, it, it, it is amazing. Okay, uh, absolutely. So, okay, what is another reason? You guys haven't even touched on my two favorites. Terry, uh, this is Kip. Hey, Kip. Hey, uh, we recently have been using it um, to do three-way calls to acquire new clients and, and to really uh, get to, to do that. Instead of just on the phone, have the face and uh, get a chance to do the three-way call and recently uh, sign up clients you know, by doing it that way. Uh, bingo. That is exactly it. So we're utilizing them for pre-clients. And whether it be our personal pre-clients or three-way call with pre-clients, because as you know, 97% of um, it, it, it is the ninety-seven percent of communication is not the the verbal word. So you can watch and read and listen, or, you know, read the person, and um, and they love to put a, a, a face with a name. I mean, it's just it's that is my favorite w thing to do, and uh, and you can share screen and you can show before and after pictures. I mean, it's just it is amazing. One of the things that, you know, you heard Dr. Anderson talking tonight a lot about um, aim to stay. So, um, you know, I'm not sure what your, what your personal strategic plan is, but part of mine and David's strategic plan is we wanted complete freedom. Freedom to live and do whatever we wanted whenever we wanted to do it. So we start all of our clients, even if they're our next door neighbor, we don't go to their house and start them that way. We, we, uh, got on a phone back in the day, you know, back in the caveman days, got into a, uh, that was funny guys. Come on. <laughs> that was back in the day we got it. We, uh, would just, just talk to them on the phone. Okay. So now we zoom with them. That was two weeks ago, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Rod. So, okay. And there's another way. What's, what's another way that you, uh, you could use zoom. Hey, it's Colleen. Hey, Colleen. Uh, Gee, Terry, you helped me do this yesterday to get on a three-way call with a, um, a possible coach candidate. Absolutely. And so what actually we did is uh, Colleen took the, the A-team call, the client celebration to heart, what Kim talked about on the A-team call. And she had somebody she would really have liked to have on her team uh, of coaching with Take Shape for Life. She was in her challenge room, and she set up a client celebration call. And so Colleen and um, her, her uh, client 
we got on the call and we just got to know each other, kind of a meet and greet, heard about her success, heard about what she loved about it. Colleen talked about how she was just a great cheerleader in the room. We talked about the different people she would love to um, share health with and it then answered a few questions about coaching and then she decided she wanted to join us to assist America to health. So, so that was, that was perfect. And what was really great, like Doug talked about on the call today is we did one, you know, Colleen watched how incredibly simple that was. And you're like, Oh, I can do that. You, you know what I mean? But she, so she watched literally the posturing and everything. And let me also say one of the key, key attributes, if you're going to use zoom on a three way sequence is watch your chat window down here. If there's anything that your mentor or you need to tell your mentor when you're on a three-way call, it'll be in the chat window. But be careful not to chat all, okay? And I'll, I actually personally like to use my cell phone texting for it, you know, because there, there may be something that um, you need to know as a conversation is moving forward that maybe you didn't know that, that the person can tell you. Just a little bit behind the scenes. Okay, any other reason, Charlene and Lee, we had a great Zoom with your team this last week. Lee doesn't want to talk, but um, I'll say one thing that I did with Charlene it may not be what you were going for, but we had like a four-way call instead of a three-way call because we couldn't add an extra line. And so I got to watch Charlene train the coach that I sponsored on how to do a call with their client so we could have more people in one call and you get more training out of it that way. Bingo. That is exactly it. It's, it's you know, let's just all learn together, right? You know, to see it in full on action is much better than in theory. Would you guys all agree? You know, and um, so what we did with uh, um, with Charlene and Lee's team. Oh, Charlene, there you are. Charlene, can you come off mute? T uh, tell everybody what we did with your your ED teams last week. Oh yeah, um, hi you guys. Um, thanks, Terry. We just had to check the fish in the oven really fast. I ran in there and then I ran back here. <laughs> um, so with our EDs, we had an awesome, um, really just like a just-in-time training for our EDs and, and Terry hosted it and really talked through just what are the steps in getting our clients, you know, moving through the system and then if someone's ready to be a coach, you know, what, what's next? And so it was really a way for them just to really know, hey, this is just the next thing. Don't overcomplicate it. We answered questions. We really just went through three basic strategies and so that they could really um, start coaches sooner and not wait, kind of like Doug and Tia talked about on the leadership call tonight. Um, so it was just really powerful. Excellent. And you know what I um, really love about, um, so, so let's talk right now about the, the best way to use Zoom is literally for the just in time aspect of your business. So you can take pre-clients and have a Zoom with one or more or whatever pre-clients and utilize Zoom that way. You can take existing clients, group them all together and, and do uh, uh, coaching calls like uh, healthy huddles, you know, whatever. You can also use Zoom and take pre-coaches and share the business opportunity. You can take new coaches and move them forward too. So it's all just in time because so if you give the whole kit and caboodle to everybody, then it's gonna be confusing. So what we did with Charlene and Lee's group is we gathered all of their current EDs and all their new executive directors who are gonna be reaching that in February. And we had a great call just double checking their systems and making sure that what was taught was caught. So it's, it, was, it was really, really great that way. So um, whoever invented Zoom, impressive. <laughs> it has is, it is made our life super, super easy. Um, uh, and uh, you can record. Uh, just one more little tip is when you record, it records to your hard drive. So you'll wanna, after you move it to either Vimeo or YouTube, you're going to want to delete it off your hard drive or it's going to eat up your hard drive memory. I don't know if you guys knew that one, that little thing or not. So, um, okay. Any questions or tips or anything else that you guys have learned via, via zoom? Oh, actually I had one thing that I did learn with Dr. Anderson today. Did you all see, are you guys, who's friends with Dr. Anderson on Facebook? Did you all see his video about the leadership call today? 
So I was on Zoom with him, and I said, hey, let's record something real quick. So I spotlighted him. I record, he passed, it was his Zoom room. He passed, passed me the controls. I recorded it, and then I literally just, for, just uh, uh, loaded up that recording. I didn't have to move it to Vimeo. I didn't have to move it to YouTube or anything like that. I literally just moved it over to the recording. And many of you shared it on your team pages. You know, so, um, so just, you know, you're only limited by your creativity. So, excellent. Okay, so what other kinds of questions and what things are going on um, that you, that's on your mind that you want to know? Because, you know, one, we all know there's no stupid question. And if, you, um, if you're thinking it or wondering about it, somebody else on the line is too. So, who would like to come off mute and ask something? And if by chance it's a one-off, I'll, or, you know, if it needs to be taken offline, I'll, I'll say that too. Terry, yes. when I went on and played the, the new video for the March games, it is played in, in uh, YouTube, and it goes right, at, right into this one about immigration. Oh, you is know Is there a way that we can clean that off? Um, How does that work? Okay, thank you so much, Linda. I did not know that. So, yeah. Okay, so for everybody on the line, I posted the video about... Um, uh, a, a great video for the, the challenge. Um, so don't use that. <laughs> that great video, don't use it. So until we get that fixed. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yes. yes. The, the question is a relatively simple question, I guess. Maybe not. I am struggling to understand the difference between aiming and the S in stay. It seems like in both cases, what we're really talking about is um, clarifying where we want to be. And uh, actually, no, that's is that Bill that's asking that question? Yes. Okay. So, okay. I don't know who that is. <laughs> so, yeah, that's I, I thought I, I caught your laugh. Okay, you've got such a great contagious. I'm going to thank everyone for a second. Oh, just a second. Somebody's got their, their mute off. I'm going to mute. There we go. Okay. So when you're the host for the challenge, you want to make sure you're aware, or the host for Zooms, you want to be aware of all that. Okay. So what Bill is asking, okay, so this is actually very fundamentally very important that what he's, Bill, outstanding question. Okay. So he's asking, so aim to stay. Okay, let's talk specifically about stay for a minute. So, uh, so write down on your piece of paper, if you're taking notes, you know, write it down. If you're not taking notes, write it down. My minister used to say that. Bill, I wonder if you used to say that in church. I love it. <laughs> so is that, um, is that this S is for your strategic plan. Okay, so right now we're talking about you. Okay? It's your, your strategic plan. So what is your strategic plan? Um, and, and it's going to be completely different. To get to your strategic plan, what will probably happen is your business and mentor will aim with you. So, for example, Bill, I will have an aiming appointment with you. And I'll help figure out what is your intrinsic motivation for your business. What is it? What's important to you? And what's important to you and what you value and what you desire to build is your intrinsic motion, which ends up moving to your strategic plan. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so let's so let's follow this through to your team members. So you have your strategic plan. So for example. Okay, I'll just, I'll just talk about myself for a minute. So I have my strategic plan. Mine and David's strategic plan is to build a complete, very solid, steady business that, that creates enormous amount of freedom for us and that we get to the, have the ability to assist those who choose freedom too, that we get to have a hand in assisting them to build a complete, stable, and steady life of freedom also. Okay? So the tactics to that... So the T is the tactics. The tactics for that is a 
um, strong Fibble business, which is a fully integrated business leader business, which means to us, it means that we're going to build 20 executive director lines of business and at least 10 of them will be fully integrated business coaches. Okay. The action steps to that, to your point, Bill, is for us to find out who wants to run, who wants to build, who wants to grow, and have an aiming appointment with them to find out what is their desires, what is their strategic plan, what do, what do they want to build. And when we know what their strategic plan is, we can see how their strategic plan fits into our strategic plan. But that appointment to find out what their strategic plan is, is called an aiming appointment. Okay. Okay. And so, but it's very interesting because you want to aim works in so many different ways. You're also going to aim with your clients, right? Mm -hmm. You know, obviously you're not, I, I guess your clients could have a strategic plan on their long-term health, right? So Bill, did that answer it a little bit better? Yeah, I, yeah, I see the I see the difference. It's sort of a fine distinction in one way, and yet they're very different in another way. Yes, yeah, it is. It is so the um, so the the aim part is what you do with another. The S and stay is yours. It's yours. What is your strategic plan? When you're aiming with another, you're helping them discover what their strategic plan is. Got it. But it's very all, all so all of you fit into our strategic plan, and all of your team members fit into your strategic plan. Isn't that isn't that interesting? It's kind of like you know. So um, here's a, a I, I you know me I love Dan Bell I love Danisms, and Dan Danism is you know you know find out you know know like. They talk so much on the leadership call tonight about know your why, know what you want to create. And um, that's called your strategic plan. So within your strategic plan, you may not yet have, have all the players in, in what you need. So this is Dan's Danism. Know what you want, which is your strategic plan, right? Take what you have until you find what you need. So for example, is let's say so how many of so trevor can i use your your strategic plan for the month you're, you're perfectly okay with that okay great so i so i want to i want to share I, i'll just give you a little bit of an example so charlene and lee are outstanding they're um on their second month of qualifications for fully integrated um nationals which you all know that to reach an, uh, an integrated title you hit it three months in a row so they're getting ready to hit their second month. They're new in Take Shape for Life. Charlene and Lee have been coaches for five months. That's all. But so they're and she, they're frontline to us. So I work. So I also assist them in working with their team. So I'm also very clear on what their team's strategic plan is. Um, either because I've had a conversation with them, or because Charlene and Lee has relayed it back to me. Because I can't assist them if I don't know. Correct. You know, so for example, so Trevor's strategic plan is in March is to reach executive director by the blended path. That's, that's his, correct. Is that correct, Trevor? Okay. So what that means is his goal this month is um, his, the strategic plan is to, um, for, for this particular month, is to reach associate director by blended and then move that on to executive director which is five points in March. And so the, and, and that also fits in Charlene and Lee's strategic plan. So the, the thing is, is you, you, you know, have enough players in the game that, and it, you know, again, our job, if, if, if you're, if you're looking for freedom and security and all of that, your job isn't to make somebody do what you want them to do. Your job is to go find the people who want part of this amazing opportunity. You know, it's a, there, it's a distinct, like, have, okay, first of all, how many of you have had children? Okay, I relate it to this. You can't make a child do anything they don't want to do. Are we all beyond clear on that? <laughs> like, I always like to say you cannot make a child eat, sleep, or poop. You know, it's, okay, that's a little bit of a potty mouth there, but the, the you know, it's the same thing. It's It's so much easier just to, 
Um, find people who are looking for this amazing opportunity of the trilogy and freedom. And um, though, Bill, to your point, sometimes people don't even know what they want or they don't even think it's possible. That's what Dr. Anderson was talking about on the line. So when you have a team member who maybe has who just kind of been be bopping around, helping five, 10 clients, just kind of, you know, just, you know, be bopping along, which I have to tell you, that's how David and I were for about 18 months in this business until we caught vision of it. We, and we had to, we just kind of stumbled across it ourselves, the vision, because this understanding on how to work so close with your mentor and how to get clarity on what you're looking for wasn't around back then. So, um, once we, uh, what, uh, so what you have is you have a team member and if you have an appointment with them, a mentoring appointment with them and, you know, continue to ask, what are they looking? What are you looking for in their, uh, what are you looking, what do you want to create and take shape for life? And you know, let's Trevor, this is not you, but let's say, for example, you were like, you know what, Charlene and Lee, I am loving assisting these five clients. Happy. It's my mom, my sister, my friend. You know what? I'm busy working full time. I love what I'm doing. I love what I'm doing. I love this. Great. That's not your next executive director. Do, do you know what I'm saying? I mean, and, and versus no, no, Trevor. No, I'm positive. You really want to help 20 people. I'm positive. <laughs> you, you know, I mean, that's not going to work. The secret is to go find the people who want what, what you're looking for and assist them to move it forward. It makes such a more enjoyable relationship. I mean, I can, I can, I, oh my gosh, I, I, I hazard to say the word can, uh, guarantee. Oh, here I go though. I'm going to say it. I can almost guarantee that I have never pressured any of you to do anything you don't want to do. You know, that any of you that directly mentor with us, I, I would never do that to you. Um, and I'm not sure if Dan Malman's on the line. And I, I want to tell you guys a funny story because Dr. Anderson has changed. He, we've learned a lot of lessons about intrinsic motivation and, you know, on the aim to stay. So back in the day, um, when we, we uh, a long time ago, uh, the, um, so Dan Malman has this funny saying. I don't know if you've ever heard this. Dan Malman, global director is he said, um, so I used to, just, actually, here I go, I used to tell people that when you went to Take Shape for Life events, that you'd want to wear, dress professionally. You'd, you'd want to dress to the level that Dr. Anderson is at, dress to the next level you want to be at. It wasn't in an autonomy supportive way whatsoever at all, let me tell you, by any means. Kip, raise your hand, you can say amen, sister. You know, anybody that was back in the day. and. So Dan Malman said, you know, I, um, uh, I, uh, I wear um, a suit to, to marry if I'm going to a wedding or to bury if I'm going to a funeral. And then now I wear it because of Terry. So marry, bury, or Terry. And it was literally he only put on a suit because I told him to. Versus if I would have backed up and found out what level of business he was wanting to build, what level of professionalism he was wanting to relate to himself and to his team, and to the other people around him, he would have probably chose to put on a suit. Does, do you see how that makes it, 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 you know, and it was a funny little saying that he said he was happy to wear a suit and he's, he knows it's optional, but do, do you just kind of get the point? If you am um, asking a lot of questions and finding out what someone wants, people will, um, uh, people will, will uh, just be clear and they'll move forward faster if it's what they want. So, um, Bill, that was a really good question, and that was a really long explanation, but did that help anybody? Did that help anybody? Okay, next question. Terry, can you repeat what you said earlier? You said, know what you want, I, I missed the next thing, and then take what you need. Can you just repeat that for me? Absolutely, because it's one of my absolute favorite sayings, TJ. It's, know what you want, take what you have, until you find what you need. So, so, uh, so, TJ, could I use you as an example? Would you, would you mind? It depends what it is. No, I'm just. <laughs> so, TJ is a new coach. She's building a great team. She has a great income. She's replacing. And so, so, TJ, right now, you're developing um, great clients. You're, you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're right now you're working really hard at getting fully integrated, building up to five points, um, and developing coaches. 
So right now, you don't know who's going to be the players in your in your team. So so you're clear what you want, right? Okay. Yes. But you're going to take what you have until you sort through to find what you need. Does that explain it a little bit better? Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I just I love that because um, you know there's so much um, available to um, is you know just every so. Something that David noticed last year, and I thought it was just really profound, is um, when you bring on a coach, they're going to fall somewhere in the uh, income disclosure statement, you know, and whether they're helping one person or whether they're helping 20 or 20,000. They, everybody chooses on their own. And, um, you know, I have to tell you, when the first income disclosure statement came out, I can get a little analytical sometimes. So I literally took our entire organization and I dissected it out to find out how many were hitting health coach, how many were hitting senior coach, how many were hitting this, how many were hitting that. And I was positive, let me tell you, I was completely positive that we were higher percentage than all of Take Shape for Life. We were not. <laughs> we, we were not. We were the exact same percentage. When you are a newer coach and sponsoring your direct circle of influence, your percentages will be higher. But in the long and short of it, they are not. They're, um, the, people are people are people, and people just do what people do. You know, There's, it takes all types of people to make the world go round. Okay, so um, any other questions? Sure, uh, I, have a quick, I have a quick question. Yes, uh, is that Charlene? Yes. It's me, hi. I know you've got so many people on here tonight. This is awesome. Um, I would love it if you, if it's appropriate to just do a quick, like, I really love the leadership call tonight. And I'm going to go back and really nail chapter five and six again in my workbook, you know, deciding what you want um, and the power of choice and discipline. And I, I want to do more aim calls with my key people, um, my coaches that have told me things that they want. I want to just get back in there because I know I felt a little stuck at different times. I know we're really new, but you know, as a person when you're stuck and you're just kind of like in a little circle. And so I wanted, I wanted to break out of that. So I was excited to hear about, you know, those go back and do those chapters again, because they get a little fuzzy. And Dr. Anderson made a great point tonight about that too. You know, how we can go back and start creating resistance within ourselves. So I want to do some reach out aim calls. So how would you, like, if, if you and I were doing a name call, could you just do a quick, like, um, I know it would help my coaches and probably other people to see it. How would you help me take aim, for instance, um, if, if you want to reach out and just do, like, a, a check-in with someone and how are they doing, kind of test their temperature because they have said they wanted something and then maybe they're going in a circle? Oh, that is such a, a okay, how many things, that would be a very val valuable uh, role, not even a role play. No, Richie gave two hands. Yeah, there we go. So what I love about this is be very, very, very careful to use appropriate terminology to people who can understand it. Okay? So my point of that is, you know, for example, so Colleen, you and I have had a couple calls this week, right? You know, um, I would not call you or text you or email you and say, hey, Colleen, can I have an AIM call with you? And I would really appreciate that too, Terry. <laughs> You would be like, what are you talking about? I'm still learning. That's still pretty new. So it's a little fuzzy. That's exactly right. So I would say, hey, Colleen, I would uh, love to catch up with you and think about what's going on in your business and what you're looking for. I would love to set up a you know, 15, 20 minute, maybe half an hour Zoom call with you. Um, would you like to come on? Great. Okay. So in that, so, um, in that call, I know I would be aiming with her, but she doesn't know necessarily that's what I'm doing. You start with the end in mind. I know that when I get on that call, at the end of that call, I'm going to know how I can assist her, where she's at, what's her intrinsic motivation, and what does she want, and where is my next step that I can move her for forward, if that's what she wants. Let's say I get on the line with, with Colleen. And she's like, so, so usually it starts like this. What are you loving about your business? Okay. And then she would tell me and I'll, and I'll say, well, do you want more of that? Or, you know, what, what are you wanting to build? 
You know what, Terry? I love it just the way it is. These five people, it's wonderful. How great is that? Why are you loving coaching five people? Well, it keeps me accountable. It whatever, you know, what, whatever, whatever, whatever. Great. Do you think that you want to take on a couple new clients this month? No. I really like the five that I'm coaching right now. Great. Okay. So when I get off that, okay, by the way, that's not calling because her goal is to hit executive director next month too. So the, the, so the, the, but when I get, what, so I knew going into that call, I, I know, I wanted to know where she is. How can I assist? I wanted to know where she was. So I knew where to assist her, what my, what my role was when what she was wanting. So in, as an example with that, I knew that she is loving coaching. She's feeling very competent about the five people she's coaching. She doesn't right now have time or the desire to bring on anybody else. And I wanted to support her in that. You know, so she will take my call anytime because she doesn't feel pressure. I would always leave it with, well, once you, once you get these five people into strong fat burning and you move them to client celebration days, do you think maybe there'd be one or more, one or more people that you could assist to greater health? Because it sounds like you're doing a great job coaching. Do you see, it's my job is to move them a little bit further also. You know, just get them to see around the corner that they can't see. But if she, no, you know what, Terry? I really just wanted to pay to be able to put my daughter in private preschool. Helping five clients at a time is exactly what I want to do. Excellent. Am I beyond clear how, how Colleen would fit in my, in my strategic plan right there? Do you see that? Okay. So, so, and I just want to say for clarity, you're going to see Colleen as an executive director next month. So that's not really her stay. Okay. Or her strategic plan. But so let's, so let's say I, um, I wanted to visit with, um, Colleen again. Actually, I, now I'm going to go back up to Trevor. Okay. So Trevor, I was like, so Trevor, and if you recall this, I said, I asked everybody on the line that day, what are you guys loving about coaching? Right. What are you loving it for your clients? What are you loving it for yourself? You know, what are you looking for? And then, um, let me also say this is we were on a group call with lots of people. I didn't have them say what their specific goals were because that's cross-lining. It's nobody else's business. Did you notice that I asked Colleen and I asked Trevor permission for that? So later after we got off the call, private message with them and said, hey, if you would like to share with us your specific goals for February and March, let us know with your, so with uh, um, Charlene and Lee and David and I, and then we can, you know, move them forward. So I know that Trevor's goal is to hit associate director this month and executive director next month. So then I was able to ask him, where are you at? What do you think needs to happen? Any assistance I can give you? What is your plan? You know, and he was beyond clear what his plan is. Then after that, you just pour in a whole lot of activity. You know, and, and then it's there. Okay, Charlene, was that a little bit about what you were looking for? Yeah, Terry, really, I just want to know how to set it up. And you did such a great job. You know, what are you loving about your business? I love that. And, um, and I really love when you are clear on what you want, it doesn't matter how much you're working or how hard it might be because it's joyful because you're moving in the direction of your heart's desire. And I think tonight on a leadership call when Kelly, the presidential, was talking, she said her tombstone's not going to say presidential, but take shape for life. That was so awesome. Part of our identity thing is what do we really want? And so I want to make sure that I'm doing a good job as a business leader to keep going back and tie that up with, with my people to really help them hit what they've told me they want, because that's, that's what I want to run with is those people. So thanks for helping me to know how to set that up better. Thank you. Excellent. And so let me also, how about um, two things is um, one of the things I have found is that um, our excuse me, our goals change. Would you, our, our strategic plan and our desires and what we want out of this business change? Would you agree? How many of you that your goals have changed to, to, to do either do more or less? Okay. Mine have too. And so it's very important to make sure that you assist people often and have conversations. We're in relation, we're a relationship business have a conversation with them. I, I, I personally love to have conversations with people as they're nearing, um, as they're starting the month, you know, to find out to, you know, what's, what's their plan? 
Okay, so how about this for a topic for a few minutes here? How many of you um, have, it's hard for you when, when, um, when one of your team members don't hit their goal? Is that hard, is that hard for you? How do, how do you handle that? You know, you, you've made a plan with them, you've, you've played out their strategic plan, and they missed it. That's, that's I, I have to say, true confessions here, that's probably was the hardest thing I had to get over, is, um, you know, the, the, the I, you were, and so, some people throw out such huge goals that there's, it doesn't even, it's not even humanly possible, <laughs> you know, to do it. But you also have to ask yourself. So at the end of every single month, ask yourself first, because, right, we got to put the mirror on first and the put our oxygen mask on ourselves first. The, 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 the question is, um, so whether you hit your goal or not, the question is, what went well? Do you guys all do this for yourself? You know, what, what went well, okay? What did I learn? <laughs> could we all write a book about, you know, what we could, what we've learned in this business? I could almost write one every single month, you know? And then the third thing is, and moving forward, what am I gonna change a little bit? So there's never any wrong anything, right? Everything is about learning. Okay, and so what I have found, it's called um, SAC, S-A-C. If someone did not reach their goal, it's one of three reasons. Okay, skills. So let's talk about skills for a minute. So you've been hearing a lot about working with your mentor as your brand new coach on your three-way calls, right? That's so that we can transfer the skills to you. Let's say if you're a brand new coach. So Charlene, for example, I'm gonna use you as an example again. You brought on a lot of new coaches. You and Lee rolled up your sleeves, you dove in, and you did a lot of three-way calls with your new coaches. You didn't just assume that they had the skill set. You dove in and you transferred the skills, and you didn't stop doing three-way calls with them until you um, shared the calls enough to realize that they had the terminology, right? Right. right. Yep. So it's, it's all about transferring of the skill set. Colleen, for example. So Colleen had been um, talking to a couple people about the opportunity. She said, hey, I think that maybe I'd, I'm missing something. So I said, let's get on a three-way call, a th three-way Zoom. Okay, I was missing something. <laughs> you know, and, but it was, and it was just slight adjustments. So it's skills. Do I have the skills? Okay, so, so um, if you didn't reach your goal, am I missing a skill set? So, uh, so then the next thing, the next is activity. You know, so do, do, did I put in literally enough activity to reach the goal I wanted? Um, you know, if, if um, you, so Trevor, I'll use you as an example again. Your goal is to reach executive director by next month on the blended path. So that means that your goal is to hit 3,600 front line and two senior coach lines. So one, it's to sponsor at least four coaches because half go senior coach. So you're going to know, did I, did I do enough activity? The other is, did I literally offer the program to enough people so that I am running 3,600 front line? So that's an activity thing. So you can't sit at home behind your computer or sit at home, you know, and do nothing and think that that was enough activity. So literally you have to ask yourself, was it enough activity? And then the next thing is, was it the right activity? Okay, so that's, and the only way you're gonna find that out is if you're asking your personal mentor. You know, Kip, you and I were talking about this a couple weeks ago, when, about activity. And we uh, role played some things. You're like, you know, somehow I got off track. I was doing a couple things different. I'm gonna go back to what was working. You know, and that's why it's so important to stay in touch with your, your mentor. And the last thing is concepts. Concepts is often some, um, I, I, to, to be able to explain concepts, it's, it's what, what you think, what you're positive you believe when there's, it's not necessarily true. 
but you're positive it's true. So the only thing I could say to that is, could you, could you self-assess yourself to ask yourself if you actually are open to not being positive about everything? How many of you are open to that? You know, I'm, I, you know what, I, might, I shouldn't have even had to raise your hand because if you're not, you're going to raise your hand anyway. So the, but, but truly ask yourself, do I, is what I know, I know. Whoops. Sorry, can I, this is Rod. Uh, can I ask a, a restatement of that? I, I'm not sure I really understand what you just said. Absolutely. So, yeah. okay. So would you like me to give an example? Yes. Yes, please. Okay, great. So this is perfect. So um, am I echoing? I'm not echoing? Okay. So mm -hmm. for example, like we start our, uh, we have found that the best way to start clients is with the, the um, optimal variety kit plus three extra boxes, okay? Data, clarity, everything. So what if you were the type of person that really watches your pennies? They're just really like, you're very analytical and you're all, you know, about that. And let's say you decide in your mind that this program's expensive, okay? Then you all of a sudden telling yourself, Nobody wants to do this program because it's expensive. And you've decided in your mind that's factual. Even though there's tons and hundreds and hundreds of people starting program every single day. Okay? So let's, um, that's one example. So another example would be, is actually, and um, Julie Judy's on the line, and, um, uh, and she's driving, and I'm, the reason I'm going to give her as an example, because she and I were visiting this last week, about um, uh, getting on this call, the Zoom call. And, um, you know, it, it was just a huge shift for her. She said, well, you know, Monday, Mondays I have my granddaughter and I'm traveling to take my granddaughter back to her mom uh, during the Zoom call, so, I, so I'm not on it. And so then what I did is I went back to structural dynamics and structure. so um, Julie, what is your strategic plan? What is your desire? And then all of a sudden, I can be on this. I can schedule my time. It's up to me. I can schedule to return my granddaughter an hour later or an hour earlier. I have freedom of my life. Sometimes we get so stuck in what we're positive is factual that we're not open to different opportunities, op different options. Did that help a little bit, Rod? Yes, it did. Thank you. Okay. So, and what I find is we all have personal blind spots. Yes. We all have personal blind spots, and we're um, and we're we're, we're never going to find them ourselves. They're blind. I mean, you know, we're we're not going to find them ourselves. But what a lot a lot of people do is they they try to um, they go to their mentor and say, um, "Tell me what my blind spot is." <laughs> Doesn't matter if we told you, you wouldn't be able to see it. So the, the secret is, is to ask enough questions. So for example, with Julie, I was able to ask her a variety of different things to help her realize that she was missing some key stuff that goes on on these calls. And then I was able to ask her, was that important? And then she's, I'm in control of my life. I can do whatever I want. Okay, it's now important to me. So I have known for a while that there's some key stuff here that wasn't, that wasn't being relayed. But, but I couldn't have just told her that. Do you see what I'm saying? So the thing that I have found is that if, if, if you ask, so let's say you're working with a team member and you know they have some blind spots they're missing somehow. Ask enough questions. Doug Wood calls it leading the witness. Ask enough questions so that they could come to the answer themselves. If they by chance don't come to the answer themselves after you've asked the question every little every which way but loose, they're not going to hear it anyway. And 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 let me say, for example, I I'm not willing to tell somebody anything they're not willing to hear because they're all of a sudden not going to like me any longer. If they're not willing to hear it, they're not going to believe it's true, and they're think they're just going to think I'm being mean <laughs> or not nice. So. The best way is just to keep asking the question, asking what do you want, what are you looking for, what do you think that would look like, how do you think you could do that differently, what do you think other people are doing. There's just so many ways to ask those questions. 
So any, any, you know, we're wrapping up here. Gosh, we're, gosh, I can't believe we're almost on for an hour already. Um, any last questions or do you want me, anybody like me to give a little bit of clarity on how moving forward we're working with the games, the health games? This is, this is Ron again. Yes. Um, maybe, uh, I somehow suspect I'm not alone in this. Um, it almost strikes me like I need to go back to boot camp on how to do this stuff. <laughs> and I'm wondering if we could structure a program for new health coaches to step through lots of these different concepts that we just talked about uh, to kind of maybe make it, you know, I hate to say formal, but, uh, you know, something that's a little more structured. You know what, Rod, uh, you are not alone, okay? So um, one of the things that I have been offering is um, impromptu Zooms and, and doing that. How many of you, raise your hand if you've reached, if you've hopped on one of my impromptu Zooms, okay? Where I post them at is in um, the Miller Health Games page. I'll say impromptu, you know, Sunday night, 7 o'clock, or impromptu, whatever, okay? And that's... Um, but the, the thing is, is you have to have, yeah, if you've attended one of my impromptu Zooms, please write that in the chat window. You know, just so the, the thing is, but you have to have your settings marked in those, in that page, so that if you see a notice come up from me, you're going to see it. Otherwise, if you're not checking that page, you're not going to see it. Because what I don't want to do is I don't want to flood your email with, with a, I don't know about how many, like I get 200 emails a day, you know, I, I, I'm sure some of you get close to that too. So, um, it is impromptu and, um, uh, uh, I would actually be more than willing. How many of you were on my impromptu zoom last night? Uh, Sam, I know you were on it. Um, Trevor, you were on it, you know? I, I would love to schedule, a, 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 Trevor, don't you think a duplicate of that would just be beyond beneficial? So, so Rod, it spoke, it spoke to intrinsic motivation. It spoke to how you earn your cab. It spoke to how you um, uh, uh, start a new client. What, you, what do you do with their second client? You know, so that's, that's what we're talking, to, talking about. Um, I'm thinking, you know what, actually, um, consensus here, I'd, I'd be more than happy to not do a, uh, a, um, impromptu one. How about a, a scheduled one? Um, can I get, a um, a consensus here? Would Wednesday evening at six o'clock Pacific work for people? Okay. So Wednesday 6 p.m. Pacific, that's going to be February 25th, <clears throat> okay, and it is going to be in the same Zoom room, okay, and it's going to be, and it's going to talk about all the basics, just like a good refresher course for you, Rod, how's that, okay, and um, so be sure and talk to all your coaches, I'll post it on the Miller, um, that's excellent, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. I, I yeah, and I like to do impromptu ones, but I also, um, and I will record it and I'll post it back on the game. Are you guys all on the Miller Challenge page? Okay, that is our go-to page now. Okay, that is that is what it is. Okay, so with that said, I'm so Rod. Thank you for asking. I think that's going to be an outstanding training. So Wednesday, six p.m. Pacific. Okay. Um, so, uh, Sally, will you chat me and tell me who your sponsor is? So I can, so, and that's how I'll, you get on the page is your, your sponsor adds you to that page. Okay. So, so, uh, okay. Matt, Matt and Christy. So Matt and Christy add her to the games page. Okay. The, um, with, uh, or it might not be Matt. It might not. Okay. Whatever. Anyway, figure it out. Ask your sponsor to add you to that page. So the question is, is to ask yourself, are all of my team members on that page? Go in and add them to the page, you know. Um, okay, so with that said, so the games, moving forward. How many of you participated in the previous challenges? Okay. How many of you, no judgment here, how many of you plan to participate in the March games? Fully part. yeah, okay. 
So this is what I would say. If, if you're going to fully participate, then dive in and fully participate, promote it, whatever. David and I are uh, taking a, just a, a little hiatus, and we are um, going to participate um, uh, in, in the games, and we have asked our uh, existing challengers who want to participate in the March games. But we're doing a full-on launch in April, okay? So that's how we're doing it, just because we've got a lot of new coaches that, you know, we've brought over 500 coaches into our organization in the last two months. So, you know, we want to make sure we get up and going. And Rod, to your point, I'm going to do this Wednesday night training, you know. And the, the thing is, is that, so whether you're going to participate or not, please let your current challengers know that there's another challenge, another games, excuse me. i got to get my terminology right. Okay, so we want to make sure that, um, and if you're not going to participate in the, in the games, <coughs> go up your support team till you find somebody who is ha who does have a room and then and then post that link on your current room okay jessica compice you had a, a question you want to pull off mute and thank you my computer is being super slow okay um i do so i have a health coach who just became a health coach two days ago I've gotten her kit. We've done some calls and we've done three and I checked with her tonight. Um, we've, we're getting her first client set up on her office in motion. And I said, Hey, can we scream for you and I to do some more three way calls? Would you like to do that? And her response was, I don't have anyone else to call right now. I will keep you posted. And I'm a little stumped as to how to respond in a supportive way. Excellent. So, okay. Okay, was is that just an absolute perfect question for for you all you you all to to um, ask like oh what would you say? <laughs> so I would I would uh, text back and say um, super excited for the for the one new person that you're assisting to help, and um, I bet if we could brainstorm, I can show you how that there are many more people that need you. Um, it, would you be interested in that? Okay, so there's many more people in your life, and I like that. I've assisted a lot of people, assist people they didn't even know. Okay, but, but then again, if they answer back and go, nope, good, golden, that's it, you go, how exciting is that to your, to Susie Q or whatever, that you're assisting her to get healthy? I'm here for you. Like, I always try to move them forward just a smidge, but not being too pushy, right? But the question, and that's kind of what I was looking for. Great, great, great. Yeah, perfect. And then, but the key is, is that when you when you set up set up when you interviewed her interviewed her to, for her to become a coach. This is something that we're doing, and I'm going to cover this on Wednesday. By the way, one of the things is when I sit down to share the opportunity with somebody, the thing I, I say, okay, I'm super excited to get together with you. I would love for you to be a business partner because I think you're going to be able to assist a lot of people to health. It's going to be great things, bring great things to your life. But um, whether after I share everything you decide to join us or not, you know, I, I, I don't know. You know, I'll give you some more information. But the first thing I'd love to know is if you were to choose to become a coach, who are the first five people that you would love to be able to assist? Okay, then I have them write it all down. Right? I write, and I write their names down. My brother, Bob, my brother, Bob, you know, so I say, great, why, why do you think your brother, Bob, would like to get healthy? Well, he's got two young kids, and he's carrying 50 extra pounds, and we have a, we have a hereditary, um, you know, history of, of heart disease, you know, I, I, he, I know he doesn't want to leave this life early. Okay, great, so you, how, how would you feel if you were able to help Bob? Oh my gosh, that would be so wonderful. It would be so great. Okay, good. Okay, so then I write that down. So who's the next person you'd like to help? Be part, partner with to get them healthy. And then they tell me, and then I write that all down. Because there's a strange thing that happens, is the minute they purchase their coach kit, they forget all the people they wanted to get healthy. <laughs> so, so then as I'm going through and I'm sharing them all the details of the rewards of health coaching, like, for example, when I say, so what's really great is your first, the first goal is to earn your cap, which is your client assist bonus within your first 30 days. And I'm excited because your brother, Bob, 
you could help your brother Bob, or you could help your sister Mary, or your neighbor Susie. You know, I go back and, and, and implement that. And then at the end, you know, if they decide they're going to join in, you know, then I say, great, because these five people that you mentioned, their lives are going to be forever changed if they choose health. And I'm going to partner with you. Um, and the first thing that we're going to do is to get on three-way calls with them. And, you know, so it's, it's if you've set it up well on the front end, it's a breeze on the back end. But if you haven't set it well on the front end, to Rod's point, he needs a refresher course. <laughs> you set it up well on the front end. This business is simple, you know. And 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 let me also say, I, just a little bit of transparency here. We haven't made it easy in Take Shape for Life. It's been a little bit confusing. You know, some of you may have been doing a little bit of comparative reality to some of these teams that are moving super fast. You know, Charlene and Lee moved fast in Take Shape for Life. But every one of these systems that I'm sharing with you right now, she got to use. I, I, she, she didn't have to relearn anything. Okay? So, so, Rod, I really, really want to thank you for asking for that class because um, I am super excited to spend this next Wednesday evening with you all. Um, let's plan on about an hour and a half. So uh, just in case, it, go, it goes a little bit longer. And um, super excited to, to do that. And uh, let's clear up some mis some concepts. Let's get some of our systems streamlined. And um, I just if if, if you are if you have the desire to build a simple, organized strategy strategic business that's super simple for for somebody else for somebody you bring on your team to duplicate it, then Wednesday is the place to be. So, um, with that said. I'm going to, I'll post that on the page and uh, we'll see you all again on Wednesday. Thank you. Uh, this is my favorite evening of the week. Bye-bye. Thanks, Terry.